Hello and welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. My name is Greg Martin. In this episode, we're going to talk about the idea of justice. Now this is a continuation of a series that we started a little while ago. And that series is looking at the application of philosophy and ethics to global public health. So far, we've looked at a framework for thinking about philosophy and global health. We've also looked at deontological and utilitarian ethics. We've talked about two types of human rights. We've defined the idea of exploitation. Now we're going to take a look at the idea of distributive justice and how it's connected with the idea of inequality. Here are one or two facts. Firstly, about 1.2 billion people alive today live in extreme poverty. That's according to the World Bank. That's living on less than $1.25 per day. The world's poorest 3 billion people cumulatively have as much wealth as the richest 300 people. Now I'm going to start off by introducing you to another thought experiment. This was developed by the late Jonathan Rawls in his paper, A Theory of Justice. This is widely regarded as the single most influential publication in political philosophy over the last 100 years. So I want you to imagine for a moment you are removed from the world with all of its diversity and all of its prejudice. You and the rest of society find yourself behind a curtain. This is what Rawls calls the veil of ignorance. And behind this curtain, you've got no knowledge of your position in society. You've got no idea if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're black, if you're white, if you're male or female. You know nothing about yourself. So Rawls asks you a question. Before you re-enter your familiar civilian life, he asks you to describe what kind of world you would want to find on the other side of the curtain. If you didn't know whether you were going to be a city banker or a bricklayer, what wage differential would you want to exist between these two kinds of workers? Rawls calls this the original position. Now we're going to come back to this thought experiment in just a moment and you'll see the point of it. But for now, we're going to delve into one of the many facets of the idea of justice, and this is called distributive justice, which is really just about the socially just allocation of goods in a society. Now, why is this important in the discussion around global health? Well, two reasons. The first and the most obvious is that people's health is hugely affected by the extent to which they have access to treatment and care. And this is something that we decide upon at a society level. The second is that health is also a function of your access to other things like education, employment, housing, freshwater sanitation, food, security, information, political freedom and the like. So to address this, Rawls poses a set of principles. The first is called the Liberty Principle, and this states that each person is entitled to an equal and extensive set of liberties or rights, and we've done an episode on human rights, and I encourage you to go back and watch that. The second principle is really divided into two, and the first is the Difference Principle, and the second is the Fair Opportunity Principle. The Fair Opportunity Principle is reasonably straightforward. Everybody's entitled to an equal set of opportunities. It's the Difference Principle that's particularly interesting, and this is where our thought experiment comes into play. So Rawls was grappling with the problem of the extent to which and the circumstances within which inequalities are justifiable in society. Notice the connection between the word justifiable and justice. Using the thought experiment that we talked about above, the veil of ignorance, and of course a set of rational arguments that we can't get into in this video, but you can read about if you go to his paper, Rawls shows that a rational person would allow for inequalities only in so much as they would benefit the worst off as much as possible. In other words, Rawls could see that some inequality in society may be beneficial. For example, uh, more productive people earning higher wages may lead to a richer economy. But this is only justifiable where the worst off benefit as much as possible. He didn't support the argument that inequalities are fine if the average income is improved. This would be the position of your utilitarian. There are many scenarios in which the average income of a population is improved, but the poorest people in society are left worse off. Since Rawls' publication, there have been a number of interesting studies, and these have shown that an improvement in the well-being of the poorest socioeconomic strata has significant benefit to society as a whole, not just the poor. And perhaps one of the more well-known of these publications is a book called The Spirit Level, Why More Equal Societies Almost Always Do Better. And this is by Richard Wilkinson and Kate Pickard. And this book looks at the impact of inequity on other social indicators, like physical health, mental health, drug abuse, education, imprisonment, obesity, social mobility, trust in community life, violence, teenage pregnancies, and child well-being. And what they found was that more equal societies almost invariably do better against all of these measures, even in the wealthier socioeconomic strata. So it turns out that not only would choosing a social structure in which the worst off or as well off as possible be a rational choice from behind the veil where you don't know whether you're going to be rich or poor, but a more equal society benefits you even if you're lucky enough to be part of the wealthier socioeconomic strata. I'd like to leave you with a quote from Robert F. Kennedy. 
Yet the gross national product does not allow for the health of our children, the quality of their education, or the joy of their play. It doesn't include the beauty of our poetry or the strength of our marriages, the intelligence of our public debate, or the integrity of our public officials. It measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom nor our learning, neither our compassion nor our devotion to our country. It measures everything in short except that which makes life worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to make comments below. I'm interested in what you think and subscribe if you haven't. We'll be making more content soon, so come back and watch. Speak to you then.